Hi everyone, I'm back again. And today I will be talking about obstructive sleep apnea. Thanks for watching my presentations. Okay, let's go. What is an apnea? An apnea is a transient hot or a transient stoppage in breathing, mostly during sleep, and that's why it's called sleep apnea. It stops and restarts, and it's going to be like that, you know, it's a cycle, okay, it goes, stops, restarts, stops, restarts, and it could be happening repeatedly while sleeping. Obstructive sleep apnea is a sleep disorder like the name depicts. Apopnea is a situation where we have partial blockage of the airway. There's possibility of arousal due to difficulty in breathing. Repeating collapse of the upper airway could occur and all will be happening during sleep. So there's obstruction there. Before continuing, let me quickly delve into the pathophysiology of obstructive sleep apnea, because once we're able to get that picture, then everything else will be clearer to us. Obstructive sleep apnea is associated with recurrent obstruction of the pharyngeal airway, and this will be taking place during sleep. That will lead to aposia and which will be associated with fragmented sleep. The individual will be sleeping and waking or get aroused. The issue here is the unfavorable anatomy of the upper airway. The sleep-related changes in upper airway function will be the core. And the sleep-related changes will be occurring during rapid eye movement stage of sleep, REM. Sleep is associated with decreased respiratory drive, okay? The decreased ventilatory motor output to respiratory muscles and upper airway muscles will be the basis here. Respiration is mainly dependent on chemoreceptor and mechanoreceptor stimuli. Therefore, anyone sleeping will be susceptible to central and upper airway obstruction, leading to central sleep apnea or obstructive sleep apnea, respectively. Epidemiology. Obstructive sleep apnea is the commonest sleep-related breathing problem. It is more in older males. Congratulations to females, but they are not completely out. Children and women are not exempted. Postmenopausal women is about 15% affected. Apnea and apopnea index is counted per hour and could be between 5 to 15 per hour. This issue of obstructive sleep apnea is greater in blacks. With all respect to blacks, it is a fact. It is directly proportional to weight, but may not be the weight issue in many cases. You know, I've said upper airway obstruction. What are the risk factors? Increased age. And being a male is disadvantageous when it comes to obstructive sleep apnea. Increased body mass index, that is, increasing weight. And of course, craniofacial anomalies. For example, some will have short mandible with adenoid apatrophy. Some could have tonsillar apatrophy 
and wide craniofacial base. Sometimes there's possibility of positive family history and also history of smoking, nasal congestion, alcohol, benzodiazepine use, narcotics, hyperpentin, large neck circumference, crowded airway with large overlap and tongue size, and retrognathia. Also part of the risk factors would be fibromyalgia, gastroesophageal reflux disease, Down syndrome, Parkinson's disease, floppy eyelid syndrome, polycystic ovarian syndrome, congestive cardiac failure, diabetes mellitus, obtention, renal failure, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, stroke, pregnancy, hypothyroidism, and acromegaly. Daytime sleepiness differential diagnosis. Someone is sleeping during the daytime, what are the possible differential diagnoses? And of course, a blood that under obstructive sleep apnea because someone who had obstructive sleep apnea last night will likely be sleeping during the day today. But what are the other possible causes of daytime sleepiness? So it could be sleep deprivation or environmental, could be obstructive sleep apnea or central sleep apnea. Obesity hypoventilation syndrome is another possible cause of daytime sleepiness, narcolepsy, hypersomnia, jet lag, shift work, restless leg syndrome, and periodic limb movement at sleep. Also, mount differentials of daytime sleepiness could be dementia with new bodies, Zama disease, multiple sclerosis, amyotopic lateral sclerosis, traumatic brain injury, trypanosomiasis, stimulant withdrawal, alcohol, narcotics, benzodiazepine, and other sedatives. What are the clinical features of obstructive sleep apnea? I've just gone through the gamut of differential diagnosis of daytime sleepiness. So, the person will be sleeping during the day, and could have morning headache, non-restorative sleep, loud snoring. Apnea has been given by the partner. Person could be gasping, choking, awakening between sleeps, restless at night, insomnia or frequent awakening. Decreased level of concentration, cognitive impairment, mood changes, terrible dreams, nocturia, fatigue or tiredness, and of course, embarrassment that could lead to depression. The physical examination here will involve head to toe examination and calculate the body mass index. Check the oropharynx for crowded oropharyngeal airway, ovular apatrophy or tonsillar apatrophy, and we check for features of hypothyroidism, any bradycardia here, any increase in weight, cold, loss of air, microglossia, and of course micrognatia, that is small size jaw or retrognatia, that is the mandible is set for the backward. Macroglosia, like I've said earlier, with apothyroidism or tissue edema, fibrosis, and eye arched palate. 
What are the possible complications? The individual could become drowsy with metabolic dysfunction, road traffic accident, mental impairment due to decreased level of concentration. There is likelihood of increased errors because somebody is to take active roles today and last night did not have a good sleep. There's likelihood of making errors, increased accidents, decreased productivity, of course. So bankers, pilots, doctors, nurses, almost everybody will need a good sleep, right? Attention on the increase and of course coronary artery disease will rise. The rate of coming down with stroke will increase. Arrhythmia will be on the increase. It's possibility of heart failure, pulmonary abstention, core pulmonary, that is when someone is having lung problem or respiratory problem and is now affecting the heart and the right heart is failing, core pulmonary. Diabetes mellitus, particularly type two, Severe obstructive sleep apnea will lead to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Gout will be on the increase, and of course, there is likelihood of increased mortality. How do we screen? Some do screening, I don't, but you can use Berlin questionnaire to screen. You also use sleep apnea clinical score or use stop band questionnaire or no SAS score. MVAP, not most valuable player. We are talking about multivariable apnea prediction. Could also be done. Okay, the treatment will start with education. They have to educate the affected person and the family members after confirming the diagnosis. Polysomnography could be done, and don't worry about that. I will go into details of that. There's a sub representation on polysomnography. We can go over the identifiable risk factors found in the affected person, then go the opposite direction of that to ameliorate the situation. For example, if we have pig smoking and alcohol, we could advise against that. And if this is an individual with high body mass index, we counsel against gaining weight, then work towards losing the weight and watch the diet and exercise. We have to state the complications to the affected person particularly if the person has come from a family with possible family history of stroke, coronary artery disease, diabetes mellitus, and the like. We tell all healthcare providers about obstructive sleep apnea diagnosis anywhere the affected patient will be taking treatment because certain medications must not be given to anyone with OSA. Still on treatment. The long-term treatment will involve multidisciplinary approach. We can start with continuous positive airway pressure as the first thing to try. Some are comfortable with oral appliances as alternatives. Surgery could be embarked upon if there's crowded upper airway and as may be determined by the ENT surgeon. The weight loss must be commenced immediately to those who have increased weight or high body mass index. No more supine positioning at night. No more alcohol. Please let's embark on smoking cessation right now. 
No benzo diazepines yet. Just a while ago, I just said it that the affected person must tell anyone that will be administering medication that, you know what, I have OSA. Why that? No benzo diazepines. Okay? Opiates should be carefully administered. But bitterates should be withdrawn if you could get something else. And any medication that will sedate, please. And no medication on central nervous system, respiratory or cardiovascular system, depressant effects. Any medication that could cause the present effects on certain nervous system, respiratory system, or cardiovascular system must not be given. Okay? That's why opioids are being washed here. But vitreous are being washed. The benzodiazepines are being washed because they could all give this. You could give some medications. And those are the medications that can simulate respiratory drive. And in that case, you'll be comfortable with tofilin because tofilin would readily stimulate respiratory system. As a tazolamide will indirectly stimulate respiratory system. The cipramine would decrease the rate of upper airway collapse. And you can play around with osbutinin, atomozetine, and some found cannabis to be helpful, but personal opinion, I'm not, not comfortable with that, but some do, and no offense, that's fine. And it even depends on your jurisdiction and your center. You can also use modafinil or Amodafinine for daytime sleepiness. I mean, those who sleep during the day because they have obstructive sleep apnea over the night before who have that as stimulants. But we have to rule out other causes of daytime sleepiness before placing them on those stimulants. And with that, I've come to the end of the presentation as far as OSA, that is of such sleep apnea, is concerned. But we are not done yet. The next presentation will be on central sleep apnea, CSA. Thanks for listening to my presentations. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that you can get these presentations immediately they are published. Thank you. I appreciate it.